I'm Rosalind Bandy, and I lead sustainability for TLMI. And um, this has been just a phenomenal week with uh, a lineup of speakers every day covering topics from getting your matrix waste out of landfill to today, how to get your company certified. Uh, we are really lucky and grateful today to have the lead auditor for the Sustainable Green Printing Partnership certification. She's going to talk about SGP and, you know, get out your notebook, take some notes, because she's going to, when you look at the SGP criteria, you might say, this is daunting. When you hear Wendy speak, you're going to be like, ah, we can do that. And it's from the lead auditor. Then uh, at 1 o'clock, Wendy's going to stick around because guess what? She's also a lead auditor for ISO 14001 certification. So if you're thinking of one or the other, stick around because you're going to get all kinds of tricks of the trade from an auditor who, who is the one who hands you that certification. So please welcome Wendy Naden. Good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome. Thank you for coming to listen to my um, little speech here about SGP. So as uh, Rosalind uh, already mentioned, I am the lead auditor at SGP. SGP is a certification program that's tailored specifically for the printing industry, so the Sustainable Green Printing Partnership. So what I'm going to uh, chat about today is I'm going to take a uh, just a look at what sustainability means uh, in the context of um, where we're at. Uh, take a quick look at an overview of SGP, how it's structured uh, and what the organization is. Then how does SGP work within a company? What's a sustainable management system? Um, and then a new online tool that SGP has implemented to help facilities uh, manage their information, their documents, and to track their performance over time. So this is an infographic that's um, well, one of many out there for how sustainability fits into the big picture. So traditionally, uh, sustainability is thought of as having three pillars of planet, people, and profit. Those are the, the reasons for enterprises that exist. So sustainability really sits at where those three pillars intersect. We all need the, the planet and the resources it provides for our businesses to prosper. We need the, the people um, to run our businesses and to provide the, the knowledge and the expertise. Um, but as a business enterprise, we also need to be profitable for our enterprise to be sustainable into the future. So all of these three elements need to come together um, in a sustainable way. So SGP. So SGP is a, an independent organization that isn't tied to any, any business uh, or industry association. So it is, it is credible and it has transparent criteria for the way that it um, certifies its member companies. So SGP has published a set of criteria that any certified member has to uh, demonstrate evidence of uh, before they can become certified to SGP. So that certification is not a rubber stamping type of certification. It is a third party certified system. So once a facility feels that they have implemented the uh, sustainability management system and they have met all the criteria, then there is a third party auditor that comes on site to collect evidence to determine whether all of those criteria have been met. So it's credible, it's transparent, and it's third party certified. So it is a holistic problem, uh, program, sorry. So SGP looks at um, the entire supply chain. It isn't limited to the activities that take place within your facility. So it has a much broader scope than, for example, an environmental management system. 
So it looks at the uh, suppliers uh, up the supply chain and it looks at your customers down the supply chain, wherever you happen to be positioned in there. So SGP does now have a certification that includes both printers and suppliers. So depending on where you are in that process is going to depend exactly where you are in the supply chain. But it requires that you uh, have consideration for everybody else uh, within that uh, environment. So the, uh, the criteria establishes benchmarks for the printing industry. So there are uh, expected business practices which every printer will adhere to. But SGP raises the bar. So it's not for a printer that just has an average performance and just meets basic regulatory requirement. To become an SGP certified printer, you must have developed a, a, a system and have a performance that is much higher than just what the average printer can do. It is for the best performing actors within the industry. So it, the, the whole system is transparent. So SGP has a website. So all of these certified printers are listed on the website. And within the website, there are also the um, criteria are listed so that any, um, anybody that has an interest in the program can clearly see what the requirements are for a printer and who those printers are. Uh, it was developed by a, a wide range of stakeholders. As I mentioned already, this is not an industry association that drives this. So there are stakeholders from the, the wider printing community, uh, as well as NGOs and some government organizations. So it is um, open to the input of uh, absolutely anybody that has an interest in the sustainability performance of the printing industry. One of the driving uh, criteria for the, the development of the SGP program initially was that it is available to uh, printers of all sizes. So what that, that means is that the program is uh, delivered at a reasonable cost to the printer. So that, so that makes, uh, the idea is to make it available to uh, any size of organization, whether it's a very small printer that has less than 10 employees or whether it's a large printer that has multiple sites. Uh, SGP can be uh, utilized by any of those uh, organizations. Uh, sorry, this graphic doesn't show up very well. I know the wording is a, a little bit small on here. But this shows the steps that a printer will go through to become certified. So there is a formal application to the SGP program, there is an application form and there is a fee uh, to become an applicant within the system. Once the uh, printer or the supplier has applied to the program, there are a number of resources that are available uh, through SGB to assist with the development of their program. Um, and as they develop and uh, they implement all of those various things, um, they can also then upload their documents to the impact tracker as they go. And I will talk about the impact tracker at the end. Once they feel that they have uh, implemented everything, that they've got a functioning management system in place, then they're ready for the uh, third party audit. Um, and once they have completed the audit, if there are any corrective actions for parts of the SGP criteria that they haven't fully implemented, once those have been corrected, then they become a certified SGP printer. So that isn't the end of the process, that's really just the beginning. Um, the uh, SGP facilities then have an active program, which on an annual basis um, goes through the plan, do, check, act process to continue uh, the journey uh, with their sustainability program. So I've mentioned a few times that SGP requires the development and the implementation of a management system. So what exactly is a management system? So outside of any certified program, it means different things to different people. Uh, generally speaking, it's a set of policies and uh, procedures that the company follows in order to meet a particular objective. So there can be management systems for quality, for example, there can be management systems for environment, and there can be management systems for sustainability. But they all have that commonality in that they're driven by policies and procedures. So some very small organizations might have a very um, um, informal type of process where there's a lot of word of mouth because the number of folks there 
uh, can communicate directly, whereas larger organizations have much more uh, rigid written procedures so that everybody is playing from the same song sheet. SGP requires a documented system, so it doesn't matter whether you are a small facility or whether you're a much larger organization, it requires that there are uh, written documents that describe how your management system will work. And as with all management systems, SGP follows the plan, do, check, act cycle. So this is a, a method that's been established for a long period of time. So the planning part is that uh, a facility will develop a sustainability policy which is uh, written at the highest levels of the organization and authorized and signed by perhaps the CEO or the owner of the organization. There will then be written procedures and a program that will be developed and implemented to uh, implement that, that, that policy. And then best practices, uh, how are you actually going to achieve what you say you're going to do? How are you going to uh, reduce your energy usage? How are you going to reduce your solid waste? What do you need to do in order to achieve your goals? The do part uh, is implementing what you've said you're going to do. So training your uh, employees as to what they need to do. Um, setting plans for how you're going to achieve your objective. Um, and communicating your goals to the entire supply chain. So. What you can do in your facility, for example, related to uh, solid waste, depends upon the kinds of products that your suppliers can have available for you to use. So I think we're all pretty uh, cognizant now of the talk about uh, the circular economy and the need for materials at end of life to be put back into the manufacturing process. That only works if you have the materials available to you in the first place, so that's why it's key that you communicate with your suppliers as well so that they understand what your requirements are for your products, but also so that your customers understand that their choices for their product have implications for the circular economy too. How do you know if you're being successful? Uh, you need to check, you need to measure, you need to assess your performance in a number of different areas. And then once you have uh, completed all of those audits and assessment, then you need to act on those. How well did we do? Uh, do we have some issues? Are there some gaps in our programs? How can we do better next year? So within SGP, uh, what, are the, what are the planning elements specifically written into the certification criteria? So as I've mentioned, the number one driving document is the sustainability policy. This is a publicly available document that you share uh, with the community, with all of your supply chain and with your customers. That's a commitment that you are going to have a plan to work on and improve your sustainability performance. To assist in uh, your program, each facility is required to establish a sustainability committee, which is somewhat similar to a health and safety committee, for example, in that you take employees from throughout the organization to work on and develop ideas for ways to achieve your objectives. Uh, there are written procedures that will need to be developed, that need to be uh, developed and then uh, implemented. Uh, procedures, for example, pertaining to how you're going to manage solid waste, how you are going to manage and uh, reduce your energy usage, for example. That, that's all part of the planning process. Um, there needs to be a written procedure um, in your management system that describes uh, how the management team is going to review the program uh, at an annual basis and how that is going to then feedback into the program for the next year. And each year there has to be an annual report provided to uh, SGP as to your performance and your activities for that year. So this is part of the planning stage, the writing these procedures that describe each of these activities within your program. The doing part is now what you've said you're gonna do in your written procedures, now you actually have to go and do those things. It's not good enough to just say you're gonna do all those things, you actually have to now actually go out and uh, walk the talk. So each year your facility needs to identify an area where it can improve its performance. That becomes an annual project. 
your facility will develop an action plan and decide what metrics, how we're going to measure the performance in this area. Those employees now need to know what that annual plan is and they also need to know uh, what they need to do to meet the uh, established objectives for the facility. So in order that everybody uh, within your organization and within that supply chain, all of the stakeholders understand uh, what your program is, the scope of what your program, what you're going to be doing on an annual basis, that all has to be communicated out. So the doing part is communicating to your suppliers, to all your employees and to your customers what you're doing and what you're actively working on each year. And then asking them to also support your activities in, uh, in meeting some of your objectives. So for example, if you're looking at a plan to reduce your solid waste that goes to landfill, part of that communication will be going back to your suppliers to ask them, what products have you got available? What can you do to help us support our goals in this particular project? Uh, and then finally, the facility needs to implement uh, a series of uh, best practices, which cover things such as chemical management, um, energy management, and waste management. So these are all the day-to-day the -day activities uh, that need to be managed to uh, minimize the environmental and sustainability impact. Part of the, the checking portion uh, within the SGP program is metrics are key. If you don't measure what you're doing, you don't know what your performance is, and you can't identify uh, whether you're improving or how much. So SGP requires that every facility collect metrics pertaining to the, their energy usage, so natural gas and electricity principally, um, their waste generation, so this, is this waste that's going to be recycled? Is this waste that is going to landfill? Is it going waste to energy? Uh, collect all of that data. And then also, how much of your products, the chemicals that you're using, if you are using chemicals, how much of that, uh, the VOCs are being emitted to air? So every year, an SGP facility is required to collect these metrics for the facility and then compare them year on year to measure their performance. Uh, likewise, the, the annual project uh, needs to be tracked. There needs to be a metric for that. So at the end of the year, the facility can determine whether they met their objectives and whether they were successful in that or not. Uh, the sustainability committee is one of the, the key components of a sustainability program as I manage. And that can be utilized as part of this checking process uh, to establish uh, what the facility's progress is in, in meeting all of these goals. And then there are uh, several audits and assessments that also need to be completed. So for example, the, the very barest minimum standard for a sustainability program is regulatory compliance in the areas of environment, health, and safety. So how does a facility know if they're in compliance with the regulations? So they complete an audit. They will develop a checklist of all the regulatory requirements that apply to their facility, and then they'll go and look for evidence to make sure that they are uh, doing all of those things. So every two years, a regulatory compliance audit for environment and also one for health and safety. Uh, some of the key areas for sustainability are energy usage, as I've mentioned already. So that is a requirement of SGP that the facility uh, do an audit of their energy usage every two years. So an energy audit consists of identifying uh, where the facility uses energy, what types of energy it uses, what the practices are to uh, control the energy usage and then identify any opportunities to reduce that. At the end of the year, um, a facility then will do a, a complete look at their entire sustainability management system. That's an internal audit. So look at all the elements in the program, all the things that they've said they're going to do and are required to do by SGP. Again, using a checklist and looking at evidence to see uh, how well they've done and then provide a written report. And the very final stage of checking, once all these metrics and the audits and assessments have been completed, then management will take a high level review of the results of all these assessments and determine how effective the program has been. And then with the results of all of the checking and assessment that's happened throughout the year and at the end of the year, then a plan is developed to see how can we learn from what we 
found this year and what can we do to move forward to build that into our program for next year so that we can do better next year so we can build on what we've done uh, in the previous years. Uh, there are a number of best practices also that printers are required to do. For example, just completing the audits and assessment on all of the activities that uh, a printer or a supplier needs to do. There are a number of well-established um, uh, benchmark levels for what facilities need to do. So these are also included in the certification criteria and the printers need to track to demonstrate that they're in compliance with, with each of these best practices. Um, so for example, uh, the, on the people pillar of sustainability, there's the social element is to um, take a look and see what, what the facility has done, how they've interacted with the community, have there been any volunteer projects that support the community in that year, for example? Have there been any programs for employees in that year to support health and wellness? Um, within the uh, uh, field of um, materials and selections that they use, for example, management of change is a, a very important portion of it because if you change uh, some of the equipment that you use, for example, that might have an impact on the amount of energy that you use, on the amount of waste that it generates, and also on the health and safety of your employees. So there are uh, a management of change process is one of the best practices that SGP facilities need to implement. Um, and I think um, a common theme through all sustainability programs is looking at uh, energy and the ways that, the, the, the different aspects of that. So transportation, for example, is a large contributor to a carbon footprint of a facility. Um, so how efficiently is your uh, supply chain and your uh, deliveries, your product sent out to your customers? And what is the carbon footprint related to the transportation that you, uh, you use? So, so how is the way to make this actually work for you? Um, there are a lot of requirements, both in terms of written procedures and the things that you have to incorporate into your business. So how onerous is this going to be? How much work is it going to be? If you incorporate all of the requirements for SGP into your daily operations, then it makes it a lot more uh, easier to maintain and it's much more likely that you're going to sustain this process permanently into the future. So for example, if uh, you build up a separate uh, method for communication with your suppliers and your customers uh, just purely for SGP. That's going to be an extra work item for your employees and they're going to say at the end of the day, mm, do I really want to do this? And, you know, it's going to fall off the radar screen. All of the um, purchasing folks already chat with your suppliers to meet the needs and to organize deliveries and um, all the logistics of that. So if you just embed the sustainability aspect of it into those uh, existing uh, daily communications, it's gonna be a lot more efficient, it's gonna be easier for your employees to do it, and it's also gonna mean it's gonna be more effective and it's going to be uh, sustained in the long term. Likewise, for any of the training requirements of SGP, your facility is already going to have training for health and safety, for example, um, for new processes that you bring in, and for various other um, programs, uh, information that you might want to convey to your employees, just piggyback sustainability into that. Add an extra five or 10 minutes to those meetings, and, and then you can cover off all of the training and the communications with the internal employees. So SGP developed a, a new online uh, tool um, going back a number of years now, it's probably almost running on to five years, called the Sustainability Tracker. Every SGP facility uh, has access to this tool and they are required to, to utilize this tool to upload information and metrics to it. It's run by a third party and uh, as soon as a facility becomes an applicant to SGP, they have access to the Sustainability Tracker. So what I have up here is the, the loading page, the landing page for the tracker. Um, I know it's not very easy to see. In the left-hand menu, you can select the different metrics that measure your performance from energy usage to waste and transportation, for example. And you can 
select the time period and then it will show what your performance has been over time. So the first year that you upload metrics into the tracker, obviously you'll just have one year's worth of data to look at. But as, you, uh, as your metrics accumulate uh, within your program, you will have a much longer time frame. And you can, you can see how your performance has changed. So over a five year period, you'll be able to see, for example, how has our electricity usage changed over five years? Have we met the targets that we have uh, set ourselves to reduce our energy usage, for example? There is a, a neat little feature in here called the engagement display. So once you put some metrics in there and so the, the system knows what your performance is, then it can calculate some of these neat little things. So for example, um, it can calculate based on your solid waste data that you put in there, how does that compare to the amount of waste that a, the home would produce? Or um, how much water do you use? And how does that compare to what you'd use at home? So these are intended to be ways that you can take that very dry metrics data and relate to it somehow and, and to understand what that actually means. Um, and that's what this engagement display is. Again, once you start to load metrics into the, uh, the tracker, you'll have more opportunity to use this engagement display and it can generate uh, more of this type of material for you. And this, this kind of uh, way that it's displayed here is also an excellent way that you can take some of your metrics and use it for communication with your, your customers, for example, um, and your suppliers, and to the wider community to, to demonstrate what your performance is and, and what you've actually achieved with your program. This is the, the summary page. This tells you what your status is. So for example, the way this is displayed now would be for an applicant. So when you first come into the, the program, um, you don't have a, a logo being issued to you. But once you have been certified, then on this, this page here, we'll actually give you a summary of what your status is within the SGP program, when your certification is valid for, and when your recertification is due. So that it's, it's uh, very open and, and available to you to understand which part of the cycle uh, that your facility is in. At the top, there are a number of tabs, which is how you access the, the different parts of the, the impact tracker the working parts of it and where you need to upload the documents. So for example, this is the written procedures tab. And as I mentioned earlier, that when you build your SMS, you're required to develop written procedures, part of the planning stage, that describe the activities that you're going to do on an annual or a biannual basis. And so in the impact tracker, you can upload those written procedures here um, so that they are always stored and, and available. The second half of it is where you can uh, capture what some of your best management practices are. So in a simple Word document, you can describe the methods that you use for grounds management, for example, for preventative maintenance on your equipment. And again, this is available in the impact tracker. So why do we have this, you say? We can keep all this stuff internally. Well, what we've run into a number of times is that when the individual that's maintaining the SGP documentation moves on to a new position or leaves the organization, guess what, all the documentation goes with them. And then facilities are struggling to find what happened to all these documents that uh, the, the previous person was working on. Now they're available to you. You can't lose them anymore because they're permanently stored for you in the, in the track. And this is the other page that the facilities will fill out on an annual basis. So before you become certified, this lists all the activities that you need to complete to become certified. And then on an annual basis, all the activities that you need to complete to maintain and improve your, your program. So you can see there's also a status symbol for you there so that when you've uploaded the document, it will tell you it's complete. So when you see completes all the way down the right side, then you know you've completed all the activities for the year. It's a tool, and it's a way that you can see what is the status of the activities, how well are we doing, and is everything staying on track for the year. So a lot of information. I ran through that pretty quickly. There's so much more I could say, um, but if anybody has any questions about anything that I talked about, uh, please feel feel free. Questions for Wendy. Um, and also, I know we've got 
Jody from FlexCon, who is an SGP patron. We have others that are either SGP certified or considering or working on SGP certification. Excellent. Okay. Tim, question. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Wendy. Can you give an under uh, insight to the time dedicated to this? Is there a way to quantify how many hours per week, per month? To, to get something like this accomplished? That's the question everybody wants to know. And there really isn't an easy answer to that because it depends on where you're starting from. So some organizations already have other management systems in place. So maybe they've had ISO quality management system in place. Maybe they've had 14,000. If you're used to management systems, then you understand the concept of the Plan Do Check Act and putting these written procedures in place and then following the written procedures to do what you've said you're going to do. So if you're in that, in that kind of place, it's, it's not that difficult a shift to now um, adapt that for SGP. Um, if you have never had a management system in place, then in my experience, that is the biggest uh, barrier for organizations to overcome because the learning curve is quite steep. Once you, once you understand the concept and you've grasped it, um, and, and if you integrate the activities I've said into day-to-day -day activities, it doesn't add that much time on. And the key thing also is though, if you're gonna be the person that runs SGP, it's gonna take a lot of your time. But if you uh, delegate out the communication for the supply chain, for example, to your sales folks and to your um, uh, procurement team, then already those people are taking care of those things for you. So I know you're, you're wanting to know a number of hours. I, I really can't give you that. Typically it takes up to a year for a facility to put everything in place and to understand and to, to get up that learning curve to understand what they need to do. What are the key uh, topics for their particular organization? What are the biggest challenges and what are the opportunities? So generally speaking, that takes a year. But you know, in terms of you know, the hours it puts in, um, I would be reluctant to actually say that. Definitely you need a champion, somebody that understands sustainability and understands what's needed, um, but somebody that can then un uh, also understands who else in the organization can we tap into that can help build this system together. So that would be my suggestion, is figure out uh, where are you? you know, where is your organization? What do we already have in place? Um, kind of do a gap analysis to see, you know, how much how much do we need to do to build this system. Thanks, Wendy. Um, so we have a lot of sites um, across the country, and some are they're all a bit different. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so some might be digital printing houses. Some may have Roto. Some are Flexo. Some have both. So the waste streams are different. Um, so the policies may be slightly different as well. Um, are there certain policies that could be corporate-wide or there are certain policies that need to be specific to every site because um, we do have like 15 sites currently so we need 15 different documents for each site on, on a particular stream or whatever and then the second part of the question would be for the sustainability committee kind of the same thing right so um, you know we have regular meetings around sustainability um, with various people and throughout the organization um, so as we establish that sustainability committee is it site by site or corporate level overview Across the, across the business. Um, so there are certain things that you can um, standardize for your management systems across all sites, even if they have different types of printing and different types of products. So for example, the, the written procedures that describe your management system, that describe how you're going to communicate with your supply chain, for example the written procedures that describe how you're going to do those uh, regulatory compliance audits and how you're going to maintain regulatory compliance, you, those can be the same for all 15 sites. So you can essentially have one procedure and then uh, implement it for each one of your facilities. What you do need to do individually for each site though are anything that and then actually uh, looks at what's happening at the site. Because even the energy usage, for example, you, you, can't, you can't do that one energy audit for multiple sites because they're all different. So there is, there is a certain amount of um, opportunity to standardize the management system, which is, which is a big part of it. 
Um, but then when you start looking at the performance and assessing each facility, that will have to be done individually. So you can also then make a choice. You can have a sustainability committee, a central committee, then that uh, works with all of the sites, or you could have a committee at each of the each of the, the sites, or you could have a central one and a committee at all of the sites as well. That there are uh, different ways that you could look at it. So it depends if you've got a, a corporate um, entity, for example, that has a lot of resources, you could use that to uh, provide a lot of support to each of the facilities um, and to um, facilitate completing some of the assessments and the audits. Um, but if you don't have that at the corporate level, then that would need to be done at the facility level, I would suggest. But certainly you can, for the impact tracker, where, where I had that page that had all the written procedures, you can use the exact same procedures. And obviously you'll use the same policy for all of the facilities as well.